but was protected by his magic Mormon underpants. Imagine if I told you there's a book that predicted the World Trade Center attack thousands of years before it happened. Well, there is. It's called the Bible. Don't take my word for it. It's all here in black and white, in these books, The Bible Code and The Bible Code 2, in which author Michael Drosnan shows that by feeding the Hebrew text of the Old Testament into a sophisticated computer program, earth-shattering historical events can be predicted. Drosnan says messages are revealed by applying a simple skip code. Skip two letters and two letters and two letters, and the hidden message is revealed. It can be any skip, as long as the skips are always equal. You can go horizontal, vertical, diagonal, forwards or backwards. For example, this portion of the Bible predicts the killing of Lee Harvey Oswald, President JFK's assassin, by Jack Ruby. Here's the word Oswald, diagonally backwards. Pointing to Oswald is the word Ruby. And looking across at them is the Hebrew for he will kill the assassin. And you can't open the Old Testament without coming face to face with an alarmingly accurate warning about September 11, 2001. He is twin, towers, in the end of days, and he is twin, towers, it knocked down twice, aeroplane, and finally, sin, crime of Bin Laden. Despite this compelling evidence, there are some bitter individuals, jealous of other people's scientific and theological breakthroughs, who choose not to believe it. Australian mathematician Brendan McKay is at the forefront of the anti-Bible code movement. He's reproduced Michael Drosnan's computer program, and Brendan reckons you can pretty much feed anything into the program and get pretty much whatever you want. For example, he fed the book Moby Dick into the program and found predictions of the assassination of JFK and Martin Luther King. So Brendan issued us with a challenge. Give him anything and he'll find anything. The challenge set, we asked him to feed into his computer program the entire back catalogue of lyrics from 90s rapper Vanilla Ice and asked, did Vanilla Ice predict the September 11 World Trade Center attacks? Yo, VIP. Let's kick it. Let's kick it. To the extreme, I rock a mic like a vandal, light up a stage and wax a chump like a candle. What, what have you got here? Well, here I found the New York and terrorist, Twin Towers. I found 9-11, so it even has the date. I found You Came in the Sky. And we have Osama bin Laden That's right there, encoded in the lyrics using the same method. That is amazing. A, a lot of people thought vanilla ice was quite shallow. Not satisfied with this, we gave Brendan the US government's joint congressional report into the September 11 attacks and asked, did the US government's report into the September 11 attacks predict vanilla ice's career downfall after his one hit Ice Ice Baby? Apparently this Senate report actually post-predicts the decline of vanilla ice and it's here quite clearly in the form of a star mm. we have vanilla and ice you notice how it says ice ice just like in his song ice ice baby his real name was robert van winkle so we see robert across the same point and his decline is here it says wasted which we can't disagree with and the word kaput right across the middle that is startling evidence i think so yes did you know? Not paying out on Michael Drosnan or nothing, but how come Bible Code 2, which came out after September 11, predicted the tragedy, but Bible Code 1, which came out before, did not? Religious boycotts. They're everywhere. The American Southern Baptists called for one against Disney when it refused to denounce an unofficial gay day at its Florida theme park. Several Muslim groups called for a boycott of Scrabble, Yahtzee, Mousetrap and Twister, saying the board game company Hasbro invests too heavily in Israel. And a Hindu anti-defamation group called for one against Sony when it released an Aerosmith record with cover art showing Lord Krishna with the head of a cat. Don't get me wrong, I'm not down on religious boycotts. I love a good religious boycott. For instance, when I was about 14, I was at my friend George Weinberg's house and I was wearing a Volkswagen badge around my neck, a la Mike D from the Beastie Boys. And George Weinberg's mother walked into the room and saw me and said, Oh my God, you can't wear that. And I said, why not? The Volkswagen is a Nazi car. Adolf Hitler designed it. As a Jew, you should boycott Volkswagen. But I checked out her story, and it was true. Hitler had commissioned Ferdinand Porsche to design the Volkswagen. And the company was originally operated by the Nazis. Thus, I was introduced to the world of the religious boycott. But where do you draw the line? No, John, not the Fanta. Don't 
you know Fanta was first produced in Nazi Germany by Coca-Cola's German division? No, not the IBM laptop. IBM worked closely with the Third Reich, providing the punch card machines that were used for counting Jews in the concentration camps. No, not the Christina Aguilera CD. She signed with the record label BMG. BMG is a division of the German publishing company Bertelsmann. They used Jewish slave labor during World War II. Are you insane? Only a self-hating Jew would read Dr. Seuss. His books were put out by Random House, and Random House is also a division of Bertelsmann. No, not the photos. Are you trying to put me in an early grave? Agfa and the Nazis were like this. They used Jewish slave labor during the war. Hi. No, don't go out with her. She's Catholic. Don't you know the Vatican helped smuggle Nazi war criminals out of Europe after World War II? Hey, you. Yes, you. John's dog. Is that a bear flea collar? You self-hating dog. Don't you know bear were part of a business cartel that built a rubber and oil plant at Auschwitz? Did you know? This story was filmed on a BASF videotape. BASF were a division of IG Farben, the chemical company that produced Cyclone B, the gas used in the Nazi gas chambers. Blasphemy. Muslims, Jews and Christians whining about satanic versus this, piss Christ that, life of Brian this, Bruce Almighty that. So your omnipotent God has got his omnipotent nose out of joint because someone took his name in vain. Well, don't talk to me and my Zoroastrian pals about blasphemy because we've had it up to here. Who are the Zoroastrians? They're a tiny religious minority found mainly in Iran and India, but also in small numbers in places like Australia. Modern times have not been kind to the Zoroastrians. Not only have their numbers diminished, but a certain Japanese car maker thought nothing blasphemous in taking the name of their god in vain and applying it to their mass-produced shit boxes. I'm looking at you, Mazda. Where do you get off naming your rust buckets after someone else's god? The founder of Mazda, Matsuda Jijiro, claimed that he chose the name of the Zoroastrian supreme being because like the god, his cars represent the origin of civilization. Well, I've had a gutful. That's why I formed the Friends of Zoroastrians Liberation Front. And you can join too. All you need is a crowbar, a pot of glue, a balaclava, and a taste for living on the edge a la Patty Hearst, Abby Hoffman, or Che Guevara. Go to johnsafranversusgod.com, print out the badges, and sneak into the night. Crowbar off the existing Mazda badge and replace it with a new one offending other religions. You can try the Jesus Christ. The Muhammad, may peace be with him. The Elron Hubbard. Or if you want to get up the nose of a Hasidic Jew, try the Lubavitcher Rebbe Menachem Mendel Schneerson. Until next time, go to hell.